稲船刑事ですみんなの力をお貸しくださいキックスターターで夢を叶えましょう It's been a while, but it's kind of hard to like not know that everybody in their own right was hyped for this game. This game sparked over three million and was built up to be the like next successor of the Mega Man franchise. Mind you, I was one of those gullible people because I mean, we're going to get something that's going to be similar to Mega Man coming back. I was really hyped and excited for that. Like, trust me. Uh, like I said, here's, here's the prayer to prove it, me putting my money down for it. But as the time came out and more and more details started to arise, it made me worry, but it never stopped me from the fact of still wanting to like actually get to the game. Then when it finally released, it just, from everything I seen, it wasn't there. This is going for me looking and not actually playing. And now, I think it's time for me to actually dive in to a game I actually kickstarted. This is Mighty Number、no. 9. Hey everyone, JFGamers1 here back.、Um, Still working on like, a, a proper way to do my reviews again because my room isn't really like right now the best of place. I think I have an area I can think about, but I still have to work on that. So, as you were probably wondering, yes, I did play Mighty Number、no. 9, and to be fair, it is. It's a bad game, but it's a, more of a disappointment than bad. And let me explain. So, with Mighty Number、no. 9, as with all games, you start off playing and you are yourself named Beck, who is an actual robot that can absorb other pretty much robots. Because, let's be real, that's the moral of the game. But we'll get to that when it, the, we get to the game place. So apparently, this big battle call team is happening, and then winds up everybody's going haywire. And it's your job, because you're the one affected by it, has to go and stop all this madness from happening. Kind of great and easy and all, but to be fair to me, I felt like it was, like it was just trying to do, do this, you know, the usual Mega Man thing. But you know what? We'll, we'll let it slide for the. Since it's like Cass was trying to hit to the Mega Man audience. Now, when we get to the actual thing, let's say when we get to actual gameplay, stage one, and this is the best way to put it. In, in Mega Man X, stage one, usually when you're dropped in, you're dropped in not knowing anything. But you fiddle with the buttons and you figure out what he can do, and you go from there. Here you're dropped in, and you're pretty much only with your peace suitor and jump, and they only. Pretty much allow you to do everything once the situation arises, henceforth, how you have to take out enemies. So, enemy pops up midway through the stage, they tell you, hey, maybe you can absorb the enemy in order to do this. This is my first problem with the game. While it shouldn't be really much of a thing to where it's like, well, you dash into enemies to like absorb them, it's a problem. Here's the main issue, to be honest. I'm gonna take a little reference sheet from one other reviewer that I watch on a current basis. Think of every video game ever. They all taught you the same thing touching enemies is bad. And here, Highlight makes it the closest thing to gameplay it has. That's what I feel about mostly. You're dashing in the enemies to absorb them, but you have to shoot them and they have to glow a certain. Color for you to be able to dash into them. That's fine and dandy, all, but there's some situations where there's like multiple enemies and you're trying to dash to get to the enemies that you've done, but sometimes if you don't hit all the enemies or an enemy will randomly spawn and show up, you're taking damage for no reason because you haven't hit the other enemy. Now, it's one thing if you can control your dashes in a proper way, but sometimes it's either you dash too far and you get hit 
or you die too short and you don't really absorb them, you take a dam you take random damage. So it's like you have to constantly wave dash to properly get stuff done. And then even the dashing is messed up. Cause once I notice when you're in dashing state, as long as you're in dash state, whenever you hold let we hit left or right or down, you will dash that direction instantly. So there's been plenty of times where I'm not paying attention or not knowing and I go from left onto the platform and then right off the platform and die because he's still somehow in dash moment and one time my dash glitched out and I couldn't dash anymore I was like hitting the dash button and he just like floated to his death and died I don't I never understood that and I've glitched out maybe like one time but it was like a weird standing on air glitch but it could have been just a weird thing for me but for the most part that's what you have to do and that's the main moral of the game Dashing in the enemies to absorb that power. Alright, so. Objective base is set. There is a weird thing when it comes to this game, when it comes to power swapping. Now, I'm an old Mega Man fan, so I'm going to, you know, bring Mega Man X back into this. Because, you know, if it ain't broken, why not? Why fix it? The Mega Man formula was with, with certain buttons or certain trigger buttons, you can easily swap from whatever weapon you are within a quick fast and hurry without any problems but my number nine has it set to where you have to hold the trigger then you have to hit the trigger and then hit it again to select which one you want going up or down with the r1 or L r1 L the r l2 l1 buttons or whatever you have it set to then you hit triangle to swap to that mode instead of instantly taking you into it now for all purpose and reasonings, that does get annoying half the time because then you have to literally stop in the middle of what you're doing. Probably try to move around to avoid it, but stop what you're doing. If, especially if you're in a boss battle, it's kind of hard to like quickly just instantly swap to it. I mean, you could hit the pause menu and probably do it, but in the way, you have to still pause, go to it, hit it, then go out of pause menu to go do it. Where Mega Man and them made it super easy just be like, boop, okay, I got what I want. Easy cycle. But it's just like the hardest thing, it's like the stupidest thing that they have it set up for the game. But, beyond that, when you ha you your gauge can refill, but it refills very slowly, or if you dash into enemies. And I'm going to be real frank with you, at a certain point in the time of the game, you if you wind up beating the Battalion Man and the, uh, pretty much what I call Blade Man, you've already got the best weapons in the game. You don't need anything else. Why? Battalion Man is an explosion that does a shit ton of damage for no reason. And Blade Man is literally no mid, mid, meter used unless you're doing his wave splint attack. And you can pretty much become zero and just dash through and slice everything in front of you. So what's the point of the other ones? Well, boss weaknesses. Granted, there's no boss rush, but what's the point? These all come into play at the final stage, but they all don't come into play. You literally only need those two. You could literally run through the entire game with those two, and then you'd be perfectly fine. When we get to the point of actually dealing with bosses, I still feel like it's the stupidest idea that you have to dash into the bosses to take their power. Because if you dash incorrectly, you can dash into damage unknowingly. But if you dash at the wrong time, or you think you got it and you dash too early, you miss it and you'll be you have to like literally try to make sure you get them again. But that's not even the problem that I have. The problem that I have is the fact that the simple mechanic of shooting and destroying a boss is null and void until you dash into them. Meaning, if you don't dash into them in time or you take damage that stops you from actually absorbing them, you have to do it all over again because they heal their health back slowly. So why? what's the point of like me dashing in and shooting and dashing in and getting them is if I take damage or I take too long, I lose it. Granted, some of the boss fights are like the easiest things in the world unless it's like the last boss. Because once you have their weakness, it's really nothing that hard. It's just that some of them you have to them you have to actually go ahead and plan out a little bit differently or, you know, don't get hit too hard. But half of them you can just like s s speed body damage. And some weaknesses are stupidly pointless. Like the electrical one. You gotta shoot the electrical current so it can stick up in a shock one, a shock a boss, which is a sniper dude. But I just found myself using the blade because blade is easy and it reflects bullets. Yes, blade reflects bullets. So what's the point of anything else if you can reflect the bullets that are trying to kill you? 
Even random projectiles, blade can reflect them. What's the point of anything else? Pretty much after you after they after you get to the main stage, you gotta go through all the stages to get to the bosses. Now, mind you, I'm going here as a Mega Man X vet. Like I've played the game, I beat it multiple times. You know, I act stupid on certain ones, but I did do it. So I don't, I didn't, I, I wanted to take this route of like going from one to the final one in his normal number mode instead of the traditional. You know, finding the one that's the easiest and then going to it. You know, I want to take it, th you know, a little bit more of a challenge route to see how it goes. Once the fire stage kicked in, I knew this was going to be the roughest ride of my entire time. Because first off, stage design for the fire stage is awkward. If you're, um, if you don't have certain abilities, it's going to make that stage a lot longer and harder than you need it to be. But for the fair amount of what is what's being done, when looking at it, you have certain enemies and areas that you really can't mostly avoid. You have to be patient and wait for. But there's points where you have to be fast, or you know, at least be quick about it, so you don't take damage and be done about it. Granted. Most things you can't just take a jolly old stroll because you take a jolly old stroll in certain parts, you're just going to die. But there's stupid parts in the game to where it's like the random falling pipes. Yes, it's designed to be like, you know, either speed through it or you like take your time one at a time doing it. And then you, you know, backups for it. But for a certain part, they kind of want, they kind of do want you to be fast. Like, don't get me wrong. I, you could possibly, you know, try and wait it out. But the stupid thing is, hey, I'm going to try to get away. Gets hit by enemy projectile, gets knocked into the pillar, dies. Hey, you didn't dash too far enough, dies. Hey, you didn't do this jump, dies. I've died more on that part than anything except for the boss itself. Because that boss was, what's the best way to put it? Learning the patterns of the boss is one thing, but making it to where it's I never knew a game, Mega Man game related, that instantly killed you on phase two for a boss. I don't, I never knew that being a thing. I understand there's like instant death certain parts, you know, you know, you die from touching a spike or something like that, but never in a boss from Mega Man or X. If somebody could find that one, you could fill it out for me. But yeah, phase two of the fire boss, if you finally get the pattern, understand it down, it is literally run, grab, death. Now, mind you, you gotta know what they, they, you know, he gives out certain cues, but certain cues don't tell you anything unless you really realize, because certain cues are where he's either going to run, jump, and do a power slam, or he's going to run and just ram you. And you have to randomly guess which one it is, because you won't know until he reacts to it. The other one you'll know is when he'll just scream very loudly. It's just pretty much get close and back away. But even then, you have to like really know what's going on firsthand. Mind you, I went, jumped in this without knowing anything or what his movesets or anything is. So after beating that, you absorb their powers, and I'm just gonna say it off the back: everybody's powers, other than those two I just mentioned, are really underwhelming. Like there's no use except for like the flying dude when you have to go to the wind sections. But even then, they're all underwhelming. They're not really interesting. With the Mega Man series, every power up you got, there's something new and something innovative with it. You know, some of them were kind of eh, but majority of them, like, they had, like, a cool thing that went with them. You know, either having a shield thing around you, having, like, a little ice barrier, having a little thing to where you have a clone that runs into enemies for you, that, you know, if you fully charge up, you have your own thing. This game, all of their power-ups are just, like, there. They're not really interesting or unique. It's just there. Like, with the ice one, you shoot an ice thing to freeze stuff, but it's like a... Just a random ice shot. Nothing really special about it. You could say that, you know, Chill Penguin's thing was, like, not as interesting either. But it was just shotgun. Like, literally shotgun ice. You shoot it once, it hits something, it ricochets backwards and hitting anybody behind you. So you could, like, make have fun with that and do what you need to. And, like, sometimes it could afflict the environment. Here, it was just... There. Like, majority of the stuff was just there. There was nothing, like, interesting or cool about it. And, like, it just made everything underwhelming. And all the other bosses stages are really annoying. Just for instance, freaking boss uh, sniper. I'm just gonna call him that because I just really don't remember the numbers, but I'm just calling it boss sniper. You have to find him throughout the entire stage. And mind you, they don't really tell you this instantly, but you have to kind of realize this and keep this in mind. 
anything purple is bad. You touch purple, you die. So you can imagine my thing when it's like I get to a certain point where I find him and I accidentally jump at the wrong point because the purple thing shoots up and kills me. Anytime you die on his stage until you get to the boss fight, you have to start all the way over. No checkpoints. No, like, you know, save, you know, certain points where you can be like, okay, I'm at a halfway point. No. All the way over. That means you have to go through the entire hallway, go through the entire pew pew moments, go through the entire things of fighting enemies, go through the entire hallway of doing stuff, hearing Miss Spark Zap say some type of Willy Zap pun, and then finally fighting him. Which is, to say the least, if you understand the pattern, really easy if you have the blade one because blade man it just it just makes it so much easier i can reflect bullets that are coming towards me i can slice anything that does to you and as long as i can get a good angle at you i can just sit here and slam like slice and then dash so the boss fight is like terribly easy unless you really mess up and i've had you know my fair share of like a maybe a mess up or two but for the all in all the boss fight was not that hard to be fair majority of the boss fights aren't hard if you have the weakness of obs but for the most part, even with some of them, like if I ran out of the thing using the pea shooter or using the blade, I got, I got through it. It wasn't really much of a, oh, I got through that hardship and I did it. And they don't come into play later on. These power-ups don't really come up and play in a little, later on except for two. Three if you count the airplane. So, what is the reason for them? And none of them really look that interesting. With the Mega Man series, and I know I'm saying the Mega Man series a lot, but that's that's what it's supposed to be like a successor of, the Mega Man series. So, here, why not give it Mega Man love? I mean, for heaven's sakes, look at the title screen. There's not even opening. There's just Mighty Number no. 9 and music. With Mega Man X, there was an opening. There was hype behind it. There was an awesome theme behind it. I know the game is old. We've been like everybody's already played the game like and like probably ripped it to shreds, but the problem is I'm upset at what we got. I could go on in hours and talk about how certain fights were stupid, how certain stages designs were like well like really weirdly done and weird death pits and weird part drops and all this other stuff. I could say that. But in the end of the day, it's all just disappointing I can't like I can't justify anything the plot is weird like why you you have a mission where your call the soulless girl that is out there in the menu stream and you have to break into prison to talk to a guy about the enemy when you could have just called the prison her name is call why couldn't she just call the prison to talk to the doctor to get his opinion why do i have to break into maximum security you're a scientist you could be like hey look i need to talk to this man for about what this situation may be happening can i please talk to him no you have to break in with a girl that you've never played with by the way you've never played with call before they literally throw call on you midway through the game near the end to sneak in there and learn to learn a hey, look he activated the final boss. Just, come on, come on. So, you know you could have just called and be like hey yo fam are you doing anything here y'all couldn't do a call y'all could not her name is call you couldn't ha have call call him about this it's in her name my name is Call. You didn't think to call the prison? Hey, yo, guys. Has this old man doing shit? Nah, he's been sitting here farting around, but he's talking about somebody activating some shit. Thank you. No. We're going to break in here. We're going to go all the way deep, deep into their laboratories. Fuck up half their guard robots to figure out, oh, yeah, by the way, uh, this person you know, isn't the guy that we're looking at, you know. You know, and to be fair, Trinity ain't all that what it is either, and Trinity, I swear. I 
swear out of all things, Trinity is just set up to just like literally this to be there. To annoy you. First of all, let me... I'm just jumping everywhere. Let me just go back and like slowly analyze everything for you. First off, stage designs, they are not really that good sometimes. Sometimes they can be really interesting and sometimes they can just be really stupid. But at the end of the day, if you have certain power-ups, it just makes the entire stage super easy. I mean, if you get Blade Man, you might as well zero through the entire thing. You just become zero and you just become God. And as long as you can properly do things, you're fine. But there's one, there's a few things that they don't talk about in the game that throws me off. That, did you know that you could like heal with a touchpad? They don't tell you this. I had to learn from a streamer, Eels app, which I thank you so much for telling me. Hey, you could literally heal yourself if you hit the touchpad or hit start and that little axle things that you get from dashing into enemies that builds up a meter. I never knew what it was for, but they don't tell you these things. They don't explain to you the power-ups all the time. It, like you have to figure out, oh, okay, red is armor booster. This makes you move faster. This gives you more defense, etc., etc. But you never know these things until it happens. They don't really explain it to you. Like if you look into the guides, they may say something, but you have to go and look into the guides to figure it out. But Mario number nine doesn't really give you that thing of telling you, hey, look, you can do this when you have this after you absorb all the blue enemies. And that's another thing. You won't know the enemy that you're absorbing until the enemy shows the color. So if you really wanted to grind for blue like tank things, you have to find a blue enemy to shoot to get it from. And here's the thing. I don't think things carry over. They don't carry over to the next thing. Like once you beat the stage, Mission cleared. Back to square one. So it was pointless for me to go ahead and just like get these things. I can't just sit here, grind for them, and come back to them. Now you can inform me to make sure if I'm wrong. I don't mind this. But it just has to go to show that without the lack of knowledge, it doesn't really tell you much. They don't even tell you about dashing down. At the entire game, you go by random dashing. You get to one point in the game, they tell you, try crouching dashing. But what was the game going to tell me to do? Now, it's simply down and dash. That's all it is. But they don't tell you it's down and dash. So, you know, you fiddle, like, if you're going in there blindly, like, just like a gamer, just like myself, they tell you to crouch dash with no buttons or hints. Just gonna jam every button until it happens. And then, it, like, again, it took somebody else to tell me, hold down and dash. And most people's like, it's probably just holding down and dash. But here's the problem the entire way through. They don't tell you until like you move a certain inch up to the blades, like in them like in here, ready to like eat your face off. Try crouch dashing. And if you don't dash a certain point, you die. If you're not at a certain pixel frame, like that one, you have to be at a certain frame to where you're not being slopped up by the blades and you can dash under and properly get under so you can do that. You can't spam that's it through it. crouch dash. And that's another thing. Look the dashing. In the Mega Man X series, dashing was able to help you do mobility, help you get through stuff, help you under, you know, help your, you know, speed up and get you going. The dashing here, it's, if you let go of dash at any time, it just stops. You have to hold down your dash for it to be long. With Mega Man, you hit dash, they dash for the entire length, but you can dash jump and dash anything. So when I hit dash and then I hit jump, he goes like, yep, psh. You have to hit dash and jump at the same time for him to propel himself. If I jump and dash, he just does regular dash. Where in Mega Man, if you did it both at the same time, you still kept the momentum and you could bounce off and still keep doing the momentum the entire time. There is no wall dashing. There's no wall climbing. You have to grab onto the ledge and like pull yourself up, but there's nothing like that, which comes up stupid because in later stages, like the final stage in this area, which for God forsaken, somebody should be fired for, you have to try to get up there, destroy these platforms to get there, but they go away. They don't stay long enough. So you have to try to quickly dash up Use your explosion thing to do it twice, blow them up, be close enough to these things because you, if you're too far away, they will respawn to get through it so you can get to the final boss. I don't understand who thought that was a proper design choice. Where in Mega Man X, they test your skills and everything of like wall dashing, wall jumping, trying to get to some. Some of them are BS. Don't get me wrong. X6, the entire like one where you have to get to that entire pit and like make it to the other side to walk up, that was bullshit. But even then, I could understand, you know, try to test it to that you do you have this armor to do it. That's stupid, but at least it's more so, hey, I gotta go get an armor, which, you know, in sequential, in sequentially will help me build my tanks and stuff for the final area. For the final area, you ha I 
I literally was there for over an hour and 30 minutes trying to beat the boss because anytime you die, you have to start all the way over like regular Mega Man stuff. But there's no like, hey, I get an E-Tank shop to buy to give me E-Tanks early on. I have to wait for these little robot things that randomly decide when they want to give you stuff, mostly when you die a lot, to give you something so that I can be like, hey, look, I got an E-Tank or a life or something to deal with this. The game is just set with really weird and bad level design that I don't understand still to this day. And it just aggravates me when like I try to do a dash or a certain type of dash and it doesn't come out or they dash me off the platform and die. There's been times where I dash once and I hit the other direction and I'm dashing the other direction and it doesn't make any lick of sense why it doesn't. I can go on complaining. I could, I could, I have, like, I, if you want to, I have an archive stream of me playing my number nine that I'm going to eventually put up on YouTube, but it's just, it's, everything's there, like, it's just everything that made me mad and everything I complained about is there, but it's, I'm just disappointed. This is a game that we all hoped for, paid $3 million for, and we literally just got, eh, here, it's a game. I expected more, but again, that's what happens when false hype gets to you. It's just a really bad testament of what could happen if you get false hype for something that shouldn't have been hyped to begin with. If it came down to it, I wouldn't. I've, I've already done what I needed to do with Mighty Number no. Nine. Should exactly do when approached with a situation like this. Problem solved. As a gamer as a whole, I now, it's it's one of those things where it's like I now have to be careful about what I'm kickstarting and what you're looking towards because sometimes the kickstarts that you may think is going to be hype may not be what you want, but the ones that may look like not, not a lot may be the ones that you may want to do. But I'd say wait until you get more from the company or people that are doing it and don't just buy into like, well, this character made infamous so he should be amazing at kickstarting this and it comes out shit and then you feel like you wasted your money that's twenty dollars that could have went to a different game or like something else but duly note that i am going to support the my the mega man x collection one and two so we can get more mega man games proper mega man games and i'm going to buy mega man 11 because those are the, that's what I wanted. And that's the one good thing I can say Mighty Number no. 9 did. It brought Mega Man out of retirement, in a sense. You could say it's the 30th anniversary, but you could, let's be real here. Mega Man 11 was like, there's like, Mighty Number no, no, we're going to do this right. For the fans. Because Mighty Number no. 9 is not the game that we all wanted it to be. It's not the game I wanted it to be. It didn't live up to the potential. It didn't live up to everything. They do have other modes that you could play but i'm not gonna do it i couldn't i could barely get through this one so guys if you're ever curious or ever wondering don't play or support my number nine i mean it's if it's free there's no harm in it for being free but it's one of those games to where it's best just left in the past it hurt that hurt so much but on the bright side, I am looking forward towards my Mega Man 11. Please let that be good. Please let it be amazing. And guys, as a one person to another, be careful what you kickstart. Because you never know what it could be. It could be something good or a really big disappointment. <sighs> JFreeGamers1 signing out. Hoping you enjoyed my... I guess talk or review on Mighty Number no. Nine. I know it's not really in depth, like what most people think it is, but it's literally everybody has said everything. Probably what I've said even better to death. And I just really more so felt like I wanted to get out of how I felt about the game personally as a review, than to just go ahead and just like go over everything. But if you want to know how I exactly feel, I will be archiving 
and putting up the streams of what I did and what I had to go through of that game up so you can hear me complain about everything and probably lose my mind. But at this point for me personally how I am now, I'm just disappointed. 